this is John for MTG Next coming at you with some more m historic content. As a further reminder, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you do like historic and a little bit of standard content for the channel. As the channel is going in a different direction, as I've just kind of become burned out with MTGO and the constant having to pay money in the slot machine to play tournaments. So we're switching over to historic and standard content. So the other day we played a video with uh, Sultai Control in Best of Three Historic. Today we're looking at probably what's arguably the other pillar of the Tier 1 part of the format, or at least a variant of it, the Sacrifice List. This one was played by Polar Victor Domodorosa uh, to a Day 2 7-1 or 7-2 finish in uh, the recent Arena Open. It's a deck that was one of the top tier decks at the recent Mythic Championship. Although the play was played by 30% of the field, it did not make uh, the top eight. That's dead, still a very powerful deck. Uh, it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors thing going with the format a little bit at the top of the tier with like uh, Sultai being uh, Sacrifice and Sacrifice being Goblins and Goblins kind of getting beat up by both <laughs> Sultai and or kind of beating up Sultai but losing to Sacrifice, so kind of a mixed bag there. So what makes Sacrifice so powerful is the different synergies within the deck. Um, the various, the difference between the Jund and the Red Black variant basically is the Red Black variant, or the Jund plays Collected Company and the Red Black is a little bit more streamlined with the mana. So you're trading a little bit more power for a little bit more, or a little less consistency with your mana base. Uh, but they generally try to execute a very similar plan. Um, there's a couple different variants of the Jun variant. Some kind of have featured Korvald in the past, and then uh, most of the ones recently have centered around the card collected company to kind of tie together what you're trying to do. So, obviously, a sacrifice deck, you're playing things like Witch's Oven, Priest of the Forgotten Gods, sacrifice your creatures for advantage. Uh, your best creature for this is obviously Cauldron Familiar, you can recur with food. Um, Claim the Firstborn allows you to steal some of your opponent's creatures, uh, potentially sack them to either Oven or Priest. And then beyond that, you have a bunch of things that allow you to gain some value with sacrificing creatures. Mayhem Devil, obviously very powerful for pinging down your opponent's board or just killing them. Low Strider, very powerful. Two Bodies allows you to scry, another sack outlet. Midnight Reaper allows you to draw cards off all these creatures you're sacrificing. Obviously non-token creatures. Uh, Dreadhorde Butcher allows you to apply pressure to your opponent's life total. Scrap Beast Grounder is another recurring threat. And obviously Gigantha is kind of free to play with a deck with this particular mana costs. Uh, beyond that, obviously Frexen Tower can give you a bit of boost in mana out of nowhere. And then beyond that, you're just kind of trying to play untapped mana sources and uh, curve out and kill your opponent as efficiently as possible while controlling the board if you're up against a more aggressive deck. Sideboard, Thoughtseize, obviously to disrupt control and combo. Noxious Grasp, obviously a lot of the decks you're playing against have green creatures that you care about, uh, as well as Planeswalkers, things like Teferi and such. Uh, a Braid, very powerful against creature decks, also helps to destroy things like God Pharaoh's Gift. Reclamation Sage, not quite sure what exactly this is targeting at the moment, because I haven't played a ton of Best of Three lately. I've been more focused on best of one. Uh, I guess this can hit like the artifact deck, the, the colorless ramp deck, and then obviously Kerbal, kind of when you're kind of getting into grindy mid-range battles, helps you to have another uh, card advantage thing. So that said, let's get into some matches and see how we can do learning some Jun Sacrifice in best of three historic. Here we're here for match number one. We're actually paired against an opponent who's in our tier for once. Let's use in I think this hand's a keep, not 100% sure. I mean, obviously double claim the firstborn can be a little bit awkward, but it looks like we're immediately up against Sultai. Probably just want to go ahead and resolve oven while we have the chance.
believe Sultai is supposed to be a difficult inner matchup for this deck. You just kind of go over the top of what we're doing to a certain degree. Alright, with that we're just free to sacrifice the cat and bring it back because we don't have to worry about something like Fatal Push. One of the things you gotta be be mindful of when you're playing this deck is something like Fatal Push coming down and causing problems. <laughs> One of the few nice things about uh, Clean the Firstborn here is we can get rid of like the first or second copies of Uro for the most part. We have one of our grinding engines going here. The annoying part about expertise is they also get to bring back or play another spell. I don't quite know what it is until oh, they just have nothing. All right. Seems like a poor sweeper to be playing in your main deck. You have a fatal push or something here. Looks like it. here That collect a company, honestly. Curious if they have a counter spell here or if it's a kill spell from the Night Reaper. Oh. 
So, salt eye. <sighs> Do we want Corvold in a matchup like this? I mean, I guess it's not like the best thing in the world. Some number of clean the firstborns. Not just grass pits, what? Nissa and. Uh, it's Nissa. It's Nissa. It's. Um, Uro, obviously, which isn't the best thing, but sometimes you just gotta get Uro out of the way. <laughs> Figure trimming a couple of Clean the Firstborns is fine, because they really only have Hydroid Crisis and uh, Uro, which really did target with it, so a lot of times it's just kind of sitting in your hand as kind of a dead card. <laughs> but once again, you know, I'm kind of relatively new to best of three, so. I'm kind of learning along with you guys in this video. Yeah, can seems pretty reasonable. Hopefully we don't get thoughts used on one. Hopefully get this oven down. Well, at least be able to get the oven down, so. Obviously, resolving ovens far more important than resolving cat. <laughs> I mean, I guess this is take a collected company. <laughs> it's almost not even fair. Sure. Yeah, I know. Christ will exile them. I gotcha. Because of the particular wording of cry, it just doesn't particularly matter. The second collected company that's been kind of pathetic, actually.
pretty good thoughts these. I think we're more interested in going for the noxious grasps than for those. Mm. Some consideration for Thoughtseize, but their deck is so kind of chocked full of stuff we care about, it's kind of hard to poke too much of a hole in it. Still figuring out what they're trying to do here. And that's that's the thing with like Sultai is Sultai has so many different uh, options with like Gargaros and you know you saw the version that we played that had done well on day two of the arena open. You know, it had like negates and ether gusts and narsets. Um, and uh, Shark Typhoons. So, you know, there's really a lot of different tools, Sultai or Four Color Midrange, if they're playing, uh, whatchamacallit. That seems reasonable. this hand pretty much <laughs> that would have been a reason we wanted to bring in uh... yeah <laughs> cage is going to be kind of hard to beat that's a reason to bring in a braid in the reclamation sage <laughs> whoopsie Because not only does that shut down our graveyard, but it also shuts down, oh, magic <laughs> auto tapper sometimes. Even though it shuts down their arrows, it also like shuts down a huge por portion of our deck. Jamming this Willist Rider. If I get gone, I get gone. There's not really much more we can do here.
Yep, and Cage stops it anyway, so. Alright. I think we pack it in here. Yeah, when I was doing the deck tech, I wasn't thinking about <laughs> um, Cage. And that's certainly a card I guess you should be playing around with this deck. It's one of the things when you're playing an archetype or a different form of the archetype in quite a while, you know, best of three versus best of one, you're not necessarily thinking about the cards that you, you play in your own best of one decks sometimes to shut down Uros and this recursion and goblins and such. It's just like, oh, yeah, Cage card that's like integral to the format right now and I'm just spacing on it the entire time. Alright, we're back for match number two. Mm. I guess we keep it. Standout deck feels really mana intensive at times. Down going then scrappy. Especially against what might be a blue white X deck. I'd rather get Scrounger censored here. <laughs> really doesn't want to censor this, you can tell. Yep. Better that than the priest. now, but at least we're likely to get a three mana counter out of their hand, or we're just going to get hit with a sweeper, so it doesn't matter. I guess that clears the way for Coco if we ever actually draw anything. I guess it was a good thing for them that they did counter the, um, whatchamacallit. So I think in this matchup, if we're suspecting Cage or Rest in Peace, we probably just want to bring in some number of Rex Sages. Um, some number of Grasps is fine. Claim the Firstborn can probably go. I might want to bring in like a Thoughtseize or two. Down a priest, down a woe strider. And Corvold's just too big and clunky. I don't want to get too many of those going on.
It was a little bit slow and clunky on the draw, but I still think we keep it. Too many lands. And the question is, do I play into a sensor? Don't think it really looks like they don't have it, so sure. Kind of bizarre that you leave in Brazen Borrower against this deck, but I suppose it makes some sense. Put it on sensor as best we can. Down our opponent will take their shields down, but you never know. They might play like a Teferi or something. This is probably going to get countered. Hard to be beat two to fairies unless we hit something really good in the next draw step or two. It's just since they took out our Midnight Reaper. Not that I'm shocked there, but.
So if we would have let on Gigantha, there's a chance the Collective Company would have resolved. Please, by all means, block. Not that we're being this active to fairy and castles anyway, but... I don't think we want to go overboard on answers to Planeswalkers. I think if we get to the point where they're confident enough to slam Planeswalkers, we're in trouble anyway, so... Having a couple answers is fine, but trying to answer two Teferis is just kind of a losing battle. Getting stuck with removal spells in hand against a deck that doesn't have a whole lot of stuff to remove. Like, we've likely seen like all of their win cons, or at least variants of them. You know, they might have, like, Gideons floating around or something, but they probably... They might leave those in against us or bring them in, I don't know. But, like, they probably have Brazen Borrowers, the Castles, and, uh... Teferi, obviously we saw Elspessons, or whatchamacallit there at the end. Um... It is interesting, but I think with the this hand is pretty bad actively. Still think we keep it instead of going to five, put back what tower? See if this gets baffling ended. Nope, that's surprising. So, do I jam into sensor here? I'm willing to lose that if they want to censor it. is so freaking annoying.
something in Chiki. is what four to bring back we only have two in the graveyard currently a sweeper they have a sweeper apparently they don't That makes things considerably more difficult. feel like this game is slipping, slipping, sliding away. <sighs> sure. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> yeah, that's just the game. Back for our third match with John Sacrifice. Only one land can't keep a sand. Uh, Still a bit of a mediocre six, but I do think we keep. Question is, do we bottom one of the two drops or a land? Let's try the old curve out here. Hope it's somehow good enough. So gruel props. Zerta Goblin. And this just feels like the, the matchup where we kind of paced our opponent. Like in best of one, I'm a huge proponent of Gruul. It's just a fast, efficient deck. That one of its few really bad matchups is Sacrifice. No need to do anything else right now. <laughs> okay, sure. couple of braids isn't terrible against gruel anyway. Rex Sage could be okay. Dread Horde Butcher is probably at its worst in this matchup. Maybe Scrappy. 
That leaves us with 23 creatures in the deck, so we, we can go down a Coco. We're going to grasp. Because, like, Coco is, like, low on targets, so it kind of makes sense to go down a little bit and claim the Firstborn is pretty reasonable against them for the most part. Bringing in a Braid just as an outside thing against uh, Cage, and it's also fairly reasonable against Embercleave. Um... Seems a little bit slow on the draw, but I do think we still keep it. Presuming this is just dying. Yep. Just hold up a braid here. Interesting one. Decisions, decisions here. That's rough.
Okay. I see. So you have Embercleave. decision. Alright, so I haven't seen which I'm gonna call it. Do we really have any other slow but I still think we keep it Womp womp. Sacrifice the goat, scrying for a land. Screwed up a little bit on the uh, sequencing on that. Hmm. 
<laughs> nice. It does feel like our opponent was still in that game, but I guess their mana issues were going to keep them from putting up a good fight. So, we'll be back in a sec with the wrap-up. So as we finish with the wrap-up here, a couple things to remember as we're going through these best-of-three decks. Uh, number one, I'm relatively new to the best-of-three testing, especially the top-tier decks. I've mainly been playing best-of-one when I was doing arena stuff, simply because it was faster to get through your dailies and such. You're not really... You're just kind of tuning your deck toward the meta. You're not really worrying about the sideboard, what you're boarding in, what you're boarding out. Uh, number two, I really haven't played a lot of John Sacrifice as opposed to, say, Sultai, which I've played quite a bit of. Um, so getting the correct sequencing on, like, Priest of Forgotten Gods, Willow Strider, Midnight Reaper, you know, all that stuff's kind of a little bit uh, new to me as well. And obviously walking face first into a Groff Digger's Cage with no uh, things boarded in. When it should be a card on my radar because I've played Sultai, I've seen the talk about Sultai having cage or boarding in cage against, you know, goblins and sack. So, as far as the deck, obviously it's very powerful. Um, this deck is ba mainly built to fight creature decks. So, you know, decks like Gruel, Goblins, Burn, um, you know, decks that are very creature centric, uh, also pretty good against auras. You know, a lot of decks that you're fairly good against uh, as far as creature based things. Our first couple matchups obviously playing off against Sultai and Blue White Control. Not necessarily matchups we're particularly good against. Um, Sultai especially especially if they're on the four color variant. You know they have the pig which makes our <laughs> sacrifice thing kind of a waste of time. Uh, Blue White felt like you know we had a couple draws there. Maybe if things had shifted correctly we might have won one, one of those game two or game threes. You know, blue white's always a bit of a crapshoot with depending on how how they want to beat a deck. But uh, you know, pretty decent first run overall. Um, obviously not the most you know the best results, but you know as you're acclimating to a new format, you know best of three being a different format than best of one, obviously. You know, and playing decks that you're not necessarily familiar with, like I am currently trying to get a feel for the format with the decks that I have available. Um, I have a good good bit of the decks in 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 the the format available. I don't think I have access to goblins currently, and I don't really have access to auras quite yet because of wild card situations. But I do have access to Sultai, I do have access to Four Color, I do have access to Jund and Red Black Sacrifice. You know, a lot of the top tier decks in the format already, so pretty good baseline for what's going on in the format. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, once again, kind of switching over to arena content due to general discontent with Magic Online. Um, you know, the long and the, st the short of it is I've always kind of enjoyed arena content and I've mainly continued to MTGO content because that's where my initial main audience was from. Um, and I want to thank everyone for the views as far as that went. Um, but I am transitioning over to arena content only on this channel. Uh, so. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you're a continuing subscriber, thank you very much. And for those of you who are former subscribers who are still checking things out on occasion, I appreciate that. And maybe consider subscribing and see if you can like the arena content. So, anyways, this has been John for MTG Nexus.